against the stones. Do you know what it means? Given those two choices, yes. In the best of all possible worlds, they would just leave us in peace. But they won't. I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore, like any other. Practiced hands make for short work, and the good Lord knows there's much to be done here. Happy are those who do the work of the Lord. Zion belongs to God and the people of God. It is a natural temple and monument to his glory. When our Lord entered the temple and found it polluted by money changers and beasts, did he ask them to leave? Did he cry? Did he simply walk away? No. He drove them out. It is one thing to forgive a slap across my cheek, but an insult to the Lord requires... No. It demands correction. I and the dead horses are prepared to do what must be done to protect Zion from the White Lakes. And though Daniel won't accept it yet, there are many sorrows who are also prepared. They may not be warriors, but this is their home. If you have a chance to speak with Daniel about this, ask him to consider defending Zion instead of abandoning it. He has good intentions, but I fear that if we evacuate the sorrows from this place, it will be lost to them and us forever. Welcome back. He's a butcher. Believe me, I know the godless fire that burns in his heart. I've been burned by it myself. He's not the kind to let his subordinates do all the killing. No, he likes to have a hand in it, with that spear of his. He's fashioned himself an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. I'm happy to serve as an instrument of divine justice. It's not something I enjoy but I pray to God that someone may learn from my mistakes. What would you like to know? I was born in Ogden, what people came to call New Canaan. Things were more peaceful when I was growing up. When I was a young man, I went out into the world to do missionary work, as all New Canaanites do. I traveled along the Long 15 and followed 89 South into Arizona. Along the way, I met two men from a group called the Followers of the Apocalypse. Edward Sallow and Bill Calhoun. They came to teach the tribes. Calhoun was a good man. Edward was the one who got us into trouble down the road. No, not then. Back then he was just Edward. Smart man. Young, but we all were. We thought we could hike into the Grand Canyon and talk to Blackfoots. We did. And the Blackfoots were friendly enough at first, but eventually... I've thought back to that day so many times. I must have mistranslated. Something must have been mixed up, because the Blackfoots decided we weren't going to leave. The rest is history, assuming Edward hasn't changed it. This way lies the path to hell. Ed... Caesar needed me to translate. Translation became giving orders. Giving orders became leading in battle. Leading in battle became training, punishing, terrorizing. A series of small mistakes before a great fall. And I stayed in that darkness until after Hoover Dam. After I failed Caesar and he had me burned alive, thrown into the Grand Canyon. I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm. The flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left, never done anything to shame them. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. 
I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them. But I must try. It's not some... You are kind to offer, but no, there's nothing you can do. We don't use cams, but I learned long ago that I'm immune to their effects. It never stops burning, my skin. Every day I have to unwind the bandages and replace them with fresh ones. Exposing my body to the air is like living through it again. But it's better to be clean than comfortable. I try not to involve myself with matters of the Mojave anymore. All I know is from before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Better than Caesar, but that's not a high standard. Too much love of money and ownership. Not enough love of God and giving. Any society that derives its power and authority from the will of man alone lives apart from God and will crumble in the end. God be with you. I'm glad to see you're still with us. How can I help you? What, um... What do you want to know, exactly? I'm sure she could tell you much better than I. Oh, well, that's true. Waking Cloud is a talented midwife. She certainly brought more children into the world than I have. But there are some problems she's never dealt with. One of them came up when she was having her third child, and I really didn't do much. I'm surprised she mentioned it. I did. Her three children are safe. They made it north weeks ago and met up with new Canaanites heading east. Her husband didn't make it. He died protecting their children from a white leg attack. Do not tell Waking Cloud. She is one of the only sorrows who can communicate easily with us, and her tribe needs her to be strong right now. To everything, there is a season. Who are you or I to put this heavy burden on her now? I know, you're right. I shouldn't have hidden it from her in the first place. I just... We can't fail here again. Zion can't become the next new Canaan. The Sorrows don't deserve that. They don't deserve any of this. Sometimes I look at them and wonder if they would have been better off if those old trails had stayed forgotten. If we had never found any of them. Tell Waking Cloud if you think that's best. I won't stop you. Until then. Katubiu. What? No. You must be mistaken. Daniel would have told me. How? How dare he? What gives him the right? I thought Daniel was my friend. But he cares nothing for the sorrows. Perhaps. I will have to have a very long talk with Daniel when all of this is over. Thank you for telling me this truth. Yao Guai. Even our strongest hunters could not hope to kill so many. There must be a nest nearby. Fighting so many at once is a dangerous prospect, unless you are a truly mighty warrior. This many so close together suggests a nest nearby. If we find it and destroy it, we might have better luck. Did Daniel not give you some of the new Canaanites' fire clay? That could easily collapse a cave and trap the beasts inside. Look around and see if you can find a cave nearby. It may prove easier than slaying the beasts. I hope that is truth and not a boast. But I will respect your leadership. I stand with you. Those tents down there, that is a white leg war camp. Do you see the war totems they've erected around the tents? White leg warriors pray to them for strength and savagery before battle. This is no raiding band.
You might rush them and take them by surprise. We would be badly outnumbered then, though, and these will be strong fighters. We might also use their superstition against them. White Leg Warriors believe that to lose their totems on the eve of battle is a terrible omen. Yes, if their war totems were to disappear, they would likely lose the will to fight. I will follow your command, but I advise caution if it is possible. We should not be here. This place, it belongs to the father in the caves. We must not profane it with our touch. The father in the caves, the holy father who gave the Saros his succor and gave the new Canaanites his son. Many of the caves around the valley are sacred to him, and those who would trespass are punished by holy wrath. Do not mock that which you do not know. Such talk can only anger the father. I'm glad to see you're still with us. How can I help you? I appreciate it. Well, that's it. This is all we need. Now all that's left is to quietly pack up and try to get out of here without being noticed. That's assuming that Joshua won't try to stop me. And that he hasn't talked you into fighting the White Legs despite what I've said. Don't worry, I don't hold it against you. You're a... an outsider. Fighting seems like the practical solution. I'll tell you again. There's more at stake. Haven't you seen enough of what's going on here to see that the Sorrows don't need to butcher the White Legs for a piece of land? What Joshua wants is more than an attack. He wants a slaughter. And he needs more than you and the dead horses to do it. The Sorrows can't be pushed into this. You and Joshua don't have the right to force them into it. Please, consider what I'm saying. I've already explained to them that we're leaving. They've accepted it. What is Joshua going to tell them about being a warrior? What are you going to tell them about how to live with themselves after they got lost in the moment, killed someone who didn't deserve to die? Or does that not matter? Is that just an acceptable consequence if it means holding on to this valley? Maybe there is no place left in this world for mercy. But even if it tramples me into the dust, I will never accept it. And I will never condone it. Joshua must be waiting for you. I'll stay here with the others as I told them I would. Thank you for this. I know Daniel doesn't approve, but destroying the White Legs is the only way to ensure the Sorrows can remain in Zion. You and I will lead a group of Dead Horse Warriors and Sorrows Hunters into Three Marys from this position. Our objective is to find the White Legs' leader, Salt Upon Wounds, and prevent him from fleeing. Show no quarter to the White Legs we come across. Make no mistake about why we are here. This is an extermination. God be with you. We warned you at Syracuse, and you persisted. You took advantage of us at New Canaan to drive us out. And like the dogs of Caesar you are, you followed us to Zion. And now you stand on holy ground, a temple to God's glory on Earth. The only use for an animal in our temple is sacrifice. Kale Wachene conserva O. You understand me, don't you? Don't you? Out man. Kunaman mad. He kill all white legs. You talk. You stop. You can no nikumpa me. They are you! That's it! 
repair and we go make it. the same end he would have met if he had died on his knees. But I suppose this was for the sake of the dead horses and sorrows. Still, thanks to your help and the grace of God, the White Legs won't be troubling Zion anymore. Let's go find Daniel. Tomorrow we'll be here soon enough, and there is much to do. And so it was that the conflict between the New Canaanites and the White Legs was finally resolved. The Courier's involvement had tipped the scale, shifting the fragile balance of power. Despite their defeat at Three Marys and the death of their war chief, the White Legs were determined to pursue the other New Canaanites. But when they finally tracked down their prey in Colorado, they discovered the tables had been turned. The White Legs who survived the new Canaanites' ambushes were hunted down by dead horses before they could reach the safety of the Great Salt Lake. When word of the White Legs' diminished numbers reached the Aedes tribe, war was declared. And by year's end, the White Legs had been wiped out. The Sorrows fought beside Joshua Graham and the dead horses, eradicating the threat the White Legs posed to Zion. When the Courier and Joshua Graham felled salt upon wounds, their victory was celebrated with a great feast. The Sorrow's transformation from a peaceful, timid tribe into a proud and warlike people broke Daniel's heart. He tried to take solace in the knowledge that they would remain in Zion, but it was a small comfort. The Sorrow's innocence was lost. Having helped eradicate the White Legs from Zion, the Dead Horses returned to Dead Horse Point in triumph. They remained neutral toward the Sorrows, but as years went on, there were periods of competitive friction, even violence between the tribes. The new Canaanites, Daniel especially, intervened regularly as mediators, but found it difficult to reconcile the tribes' conflicts. The defeat of the White Legs and Zion marked a turning point in the fortunes of the Happy Trails Caravan Company. Every two months, the caravan met with the new Canaanites in Zion Valley to trade. Happy Trails soon returned to prosperity. The vigilance of the sorrows and dead horses in defending southwestern Utah, initially startling to Happy Trails caravans, soon proved a blessing. The tribes united against the 80s driving them back from Highway 50, and thus opening yet another trading route for Happy Trails caravans. Waking Cloud was distraught when she learned of her husband's death, but took comfort from her tribe and the compassion of the new Canaanites. She forgave Daniel for having concealed her husband's fate from her and learned to accept his fate. When her grief faded, she took a husband from the dead horse tribe. At her bidding, he stayed close to home. Though the courier had stopped Joshua Graham from executing the salt upon wounds, the war chief still fell in battle. The White Legs defeated at Three Marys, Joshua led the sorrows and dead horses in tending to their comrades and burning the corpses of their foes. He continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan and showed little quarter to those he fought. And yet he was changed. He no longer reveled in the brutality and cruelty for which he had been known in his former life. His inner demons, if not extinguished, were at the least appeased. For years after the defeat of the White Legs, 
Daniel did his best to minister to the sorrow's spiritual needs. Try as he might, he could not hold back the tribe's increasing militancy and reverence of Joshua Graham. Demoralized, he returned to his family and Dead Horse Point. His failures haunted him for the rest of his days. And with that, the courier walked out of the history of the tribes of Zion and back to the gathering storm of the Mojave Wasteland. Thank <laughs> you.